Well, hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> yes, I did just make a Tiger King reference. No, I am not cool. Um, but hey, for those of you who are seeing this video, chances are you probably just found out that this year's soul event has been canceled. And I know it's just another thing that's been taken away. Just a, another thing that we can't do anymore. Just another reminder of how different life is right now. But in the midst of all of that disappointment, I want to encourage you. See, Val Westergaard and her entire team of people who worked so hard to put this event on, man, they're so bummed that they had to cancel this event. But even though they couldn't meet in person this year, they, they wanted to give you guys something, just a little taste of what you might have learned during this soul event. So Val reached out to me and asked if I would jump on here and do a quick video for you. And I said, of course, because I love you guys, man. I had so much fun when I was there last year. When I got to speak with you guys, I got to meet some of you. So I jumped at the chance. So just for the next 15 minutes, just give me 15 minutes. I promise just 15 minutes. I got SpaghettiOs in the microwave. I don't want them to get super cold before I eat them. So I promise you just 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you can get back to your Minecraft. You can get back to your Fortnite. You can get back to your TikTok videos or watching Tiger King or whatever you're doing to spend this quarantine or this isolation time. You can get back to it just 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes. For 15 minutes, we're going to talk about purpose, okay? Just 15 minutes. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. 15 minutes starts now. Was While I was preparing to come and talk to you about uh, purpose and everything, I was on Facebook uh, just scrolling, scrolling through, and I saw this video, and I watched it, and it was crazy how much it related to everything that I was trying to talk to you guys about in this video so I'm gonna share with you what that video is quick because it's just too perfect for what I'm trying to say to not share it with you so it was this video of this guy named Lee and Lee he lives in Northern Ireland and he was telling his story of how he's dealing with the coronavirus see he he was diagnosed with the coronavirus and he wasn't one of the fortunate ones to only have mild symptoms or be asymptomatic. No, he, he ended up in the ICU and in an isolation unit and he really, he didn't think he was gonna live. Now, he was explaining what it's like to be in this ICU, see, man, he was on his, what he thought was his deathbed and he was all alone. And I don't know about you guys, but when I don't feel good, when I got something going on, I need my mom, right? I need somebody to take care of me. I need somebody to tell me it's going to be okay. I need somebody to encourage me, right? Well, because of how contagious and the unknowns about the coronavirus, nobody is allowed into your room except for hospital workers. And wait, when they come in, they're looking like all outer space people, right? They can't really get close to you. They try and stay away, right? They only come near you when they absolutely have to. Now, Lee was talking about how just lonely it was and how alone he felt. And literally, he said he didn't think he was going to live. He, he could barely breathe. He felt like his body was shutting down. And he said it came to two nights. It was the two nights that were absolutely horrendous, absolutely he thought he was not going to live through these nights and he was so alone and so afraid, but nobody was allowed to come in there. Not his family, not his pastor, not his friends. Nobody was allowed to come in and encourage him like you need when you when you don't feel like you can do it anymore. So he said on the second night, it was the worst night of, of any night that he'd been in the hospital, of any night he'd been dealing with this coronavirus. And he just, he thought he wasn't going to make it through the night. So he just threw up a prayer. He said, God, I just feel so alone. I, I'm scared. I, I'm lonely. I, I don't know what to do. Can you just send something to comfort me? Nobody can come in this room, but can you come in here and just comfort me? And he, and Lee said after a little while, one of the hospital janitors walked in his room. Oh, you know, dressed up with all the crazy suits, so he couldn't touch Lee, but he was just kind of cleaning up the room. And Lee said that this guy's energy just lit up the room, right? He just smiled and just made him instantly feel better. And he started to tell Lee, like, hey, hang in there. He started to encourage him, hey, I believe you can do this. You can make it through this just one, one day at a time, just one moment at a time. Just 
keep it up. I believe in you. And after a while, he was telling Lee about how he used to be a missionary. And he was telling him about, about God and how good God was and how many people came to know God and, and to know Jesus because of this work that he did in this third world country as a missionary. And he started to encourage Lee. And Lee said it was just so encouraging. And the janitor, he had to go and to go to the next room. And, but before he left, he stood at the door and he asked Lee, he, he asked him if he could pray with him. And Lee said, of course. And so he prayed to God for Lee. He asked him to heal him. He asked him to spare his life. He asked him to give him comfort and peace. And, and then he left to go do his job. And he said, and and Lee said after, you know, he started actually feeling better. He started to be able to breathe a little bit better. He started to get some of his appetite back. Um, just he started to make a turn for the for the better here. And and he started to have some hope. And as he was laying there, he had this crazy thought. Like, he's hungry, right? It's the middle of the night. So he just had this crazy thought. He had this craving for this specific type of potato chip that's popular over in Europe. I, I've never heard of it, but this specific type of potato chip and a Coke. And he just thought about this, how he was craving this. And Lee said the next morning, that janitor, he was off duty, but he came to Lee's room and he wasn't allowed to come in there because he wasn't working and he wasn't all garbed up, but he had a bag in his hand and he slid that bag through the door for Lee. And Lee said he walked over and he opened that bag. And what was in there was those exact chips that he was craving and the Coke. And Lee said in that moment he was just so overwhelmed at how God would pay attention to not only making him better from this virus, not only helping him to live, but to pay attention to the small things. And to show him that he was there and that he was listening. And Lee was just absolutely overwhelmed. And it was just an incredible video that I was watching on Facebook. It was, I mean, I started to tear up a little bit. And, that, and it was just crazy. And, and that's exactly what I want to talk to you about right now. You see, no matter how alone you might feel right now. No matter how messed up your life may be right now. No matter how many things are going on. God loves you. He knows you. You're not just some number to him. He knows you. He knows the thoughts that are in your head. He knows the fears that are going on in your mind. He knows the mistakes you made. He knows about that birthmark that you try to cover up so your friends don't see it and make fun of you. He knows about that. He knows about the rumors that were spread about you. He knows about the lies that were told about you. He knows about what happened at that last school. He knows your insecurities and he, he sees them and he says, I still want you. I still love you. See, he loved you so much that he was willing to send his son to die on a cross, to die a brutal death so that he could be close to you. He chose you. He chose you. And thinking about purpose, I believe our purpose, and it says in the Bible that our purpose is to Help people see exactly what I just told you. To help people see how much God loves them. To help people know Jesus. To help people to accept Jesus into their heart. And to live for him. That's our purpose. Now I know, I don't know about you, but when I was your age and even, even now, a lot of times when we talk, think about purpose and we hear that that's our purpose, we're like, okay, but what job am I supposed to do? What, what college am I supposed to go to? Am I supposed to play baseball or do track? Am I, am I supposed to do this or am I supposed to do that? We get so caught up in the what that we forget what the purpose is really about. See, the purpose isn't about the what, the purpose is about the who. The purpose is about Jesus. The purpose is about leading people to Jesus, to loving them like Jesus loves them, to help them to see how loved they are, to help them to see how much God loves them, and to tell them about the hope that there is in Jesus, what happened on the cross. 
And it's natural to think about the what, what job we should do, what college we could go, we should go to, all of this, right? It's natural to think about that, but I think we're missing the point. We're missing the point when we focus on the what. See, when you realize that our purpose is really all about the who, it's all about Jesus and helping people to know him, to helping people to feel his love, to helping people to see how much he loves them, and for us to understand how much he loves us. When we know that our purpose is the who, it takes the pressure off the what. See, God can use you in whatever you're doing. See, when we live our lives like Colossians 20, like Colossians 3.23 says, it says, put your heart and soul into every activity you do as though you were doing it for the Lord himself and not just for others. When we do that and we live that way, God can use us in extraordinary ways. You see, that janitor knew that the same God was inside of him when he was that when he was a, a missionary than when he was a janitor. See, God used that janitor not when he was being a missionary to get to Lee, but to when he was just a janitor. See, God didn't wait until David was a king to have him conquer Goliath. No, he was just a shepherd boy. You may feel like you're just a middle schooler. You may feel like you're just a loser. You may feel like you're just a loner. You may feel like you're just just this only child, whatever. And you may feel like God can't use you. But God can use you wherever you are. See, some of your friends don't know the hope in Jesus that you know. And right now they're scared. Maybe their parents are scared. God can use you. To show them love. To show them how much Jesus loves them. But you got to be willing. So when you focus on Jesus, I promise you, the what will fall into place. Spend time reading God's word in the Bible. Find out what he says about you. Find out how he sees you and how he sees other people. Pray to him, ask him to show you ways that you can help the people around you to feel his love and to come to know him. Ask him to show you what are the next steps that you can take today. And be willing to let him use you even when it seems crazy. Be willing to do the small things for him. And I promise you, you will look back and see that the what, all the things we've been worried about in in the natural, what job I should have, what college I should have, those things will become smaller as you realize that whatever you do is about the who. And God will take care of you when you focus on Him. So spend time praying with Him. Spend time reading His Word. Spend time being open to how He can use you. Even as a middle schooler, I promise you, your parents might be going through something right now. But you know what? You could pray with them. You can pray for them. You can pray for our leaders. You can pray for people around you. I promise you, He will use you in extraordinary ways if you just let Him. And if you do that, you will feel full, so fulfilled. Because that is the purpose of us being here. Focus on the who, focus on Jesus, and the what will come. Now, I know I went over just a little bit. My spaghettios are getting cold, so before we go, I just want to pray with you real quick. God, I thank you so much for bringing these students here with me today. I pray that you would show them how much you love them. I pray that you would show them who they are in you. I pray that you would help them to feel your presence. I ask that you would show them what the next steps are in their life. I ask that you would show them how you can use them in their lives right now with the people around them. I ask that you would help them to be bold, to pray for their friends, to pray with their friends, to pray with their family and pray for their family and in those around them. I ask that you would help them to be courageous and to share your love with them and to share the good news about what you did on the cross so that we could be close to you and eventually get to heaven, Lord. I ask that you would help them to share that with their friends and to live that purpose and to feel fulfilled, Lord. And I pray that as they do this, as they come to know you more, as they come to 
love you more and follow you day in and day out. I pray that you would help them to see the what's. I pray that you would help them to know what the next step that they should take in their life is and give them comfort and give them courage. And Lord, I ask that you would bless them, keep them safe, keep them healthy, Lord. And I thank you for everything you've done for us and everything you are going to do. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, it's been so incredible getting to see you guys again, for, even though it's virtually. If you ever need anything, reach out to me. I'd love to pray with you. If you have never accepted Jesus into your heart and you're saying, man, I need that hope right now. I need that love right now. I would love to pray with you. Just send me a, a direct message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'll put up my my uh, handle there just send me a message or contact Val or somebody we'd love to pray with you guys you are the difference makers but don't forget it's not about the what it's about the who it's about Jesus now go out there and help people to see how much he loves them help people to feel how much he loves them and share the good news and the hope that you have with the world they need it more than ever right now. Guys, I love you. Jesus loves you. I can't wait until we can meet in person again. Peace out, guys.